After taking a three hour nap in a shell rest area, I continued my journey to Austin. I had finally at least made it to Houston by around noon. No offense to these other drivers, but it was nice to see a traffic jam going the other way for once. I had finally reached my destination, Austin, Texas. By this point, I had been in my car for almost 20 hours. It's time to unload the car, get checked in, unpack, and go to sleep. I don't think I have ever been so excited to lay down in a hotel bed. As I check in, they tell me that my reservation has been canceled because I'm checking in a day late. But this isn't true. My reservation is for today. Even after showing them in my Expedia app, they still made me call Expedia to send over the information again to prove that I could get checked in. This all felt a bit like a scheme to try and get me kicked out of my room so they could charge the people flooding out of Louisiana to avoid the hurricane and charge them more money as there was higher demand. The Courtyard Marriott in Austin continued to be a bad customer service experience the entire two week stay I was there. As I finally arrived from my room, all I could think about was the people in New Orleans that had decided to stick out the stairs. 150 miles an hour. A tremendous amount of wind, and this is tough conditions to survive. The roof is coming. Holy a million people just in the New Orleans area alone without power, and it's going to be a while before they have it, Shep. Here's the situation. The eight feeder lines that bring that electricity into the city, they're in the Mississippi River right now. To the south and west of New Orleans, according to local officials, many areas have no power, no water, no sewer, no cell phone coverage. Essentially completely cut off from the outside world, the roads impassable, and many of those small towns in the bayou. Flooded. I woke up the next day and touched base with my Airbnb host as her and her husband decided to stick out the storm and stay in New Orleans. She let me know that they were still without power and that the house was fine, but unfortunately their car had been crushed by the large tree that was in their yard. Alright, so when the dude crashed into the back of my car, my bike was on the back of the car. Somehow it's not a mangled mess. I truly don't know how it's not a mangled mess. But the big gear where the chain goes is bent and wobbles now. So I think I'm going to have to take it to a cycle shop. There's a place right down the road that I'm going to take it to that seems like a really nice local place. I'm going to ride there now, see if they can help me out. Unfortunately in Austin, seeing homeless camps like this is a really common occurrence. Pretty nasty little fender bender and this guy was on the back and uh, I'm honestly really surprised that it's not crunched. Alright, so as expected the gears are completely um, they actually had a replacement one here. These guys are awesome. Genuinely impressed. So come to a flat track coffee and cycle east. Well, the bike is all fixed. It honestly rides even better now, even before it got hit by a car. So time to go back to the hotel, maybe take proof for a short walk, and maybe edit the vlog a little bit. I'll tell you what, these bike trails in Austin are amazing almost back to the hotel. I found this extremely common in every city I went to. Even though that there's a nice sidewalk right there, he continues to walk down the bike path. Thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you next time when we explore the city of Austin.